What's up, guys? W Rex is back with another video today. We're continuing uh, the early Muslim expansion uh, by kings and generals. This series has been great so far, guys. Uh, you know, we can get to big battles now, yeah. really big battles, and Cleese still killing them. He's still man. winning battles with like the methods he's doing. But he's doing the same method. That's why. Yeah, I'm but he's still he's, he's still, still winning though. Yeah, so you gotta put that credit to him and stuff yeah. like that. So. We'll see what we get into in this video, what he do. So, if you like the video, guys, please hit that subscribe button, guys. Hit that like button. Also, uh, comment below what the videos you want us to react to. Mm -hmm. And we, let's, without further ado, let's get into the video. For some time, various sources provide numbers of this army ranging from a very modest 30,000 to the fantastical 400,000. It should be noted that the chroniclers who wrote on this war lived at least one or two generations after the events, so their depictions weren't based on first or even second-hand accounts. We know that at the peak of the Byzantine Sassanid War of 602 to 628, Heraclius was able to raise an army of 70,000 for his attack on the wow. Sassanid Empire, but that army had a considerable Gurkturk element. At the same time, the Byzantines had to keep some forces in Italy, the Balkans and the Caucasus, in order to check the encroaching Lombards, Slavs, Avars and Khazars. Mm. In our opinion, like they the Byzantines outnumbered <laughs> their opponents at least 2 to 1, they, but, but they considering still outnumbered the though. logistical situation in the area of operation, their numbers were below 100,000. Heraclius, who was now in his 60s, suffered from edema so he wasn't going to lead the army, predominantly made of Greeks, Armenians and Christian Arabs, personally. Instead, the army was divided into five columns, commanded by five generals. Hmm. The plan was to engage and surround the Muslim forces around Emesa, and use another column to take Damascus, and prevent the troops of the Caliphate operating to the south from reinforcing the northern bringing a fight to him? The army left and Nah, if he win this battle, right, he really is out of this time, time, bro. Like, it's crazy. Tioch in the middle of June. Unfortunately for the Romans, a few days before their leading column reached Emesa, the Arabs learned about the counterattack, either uh, from their spies that's or crazy. from the prisoners they took while raiding Shizar. So Abu Ubaidah ordered his corps to fall back. Initially, the idea was to retreat to Damascus to preserve this conquest but the city was surrounded by open space that would have given an army with superior numbers an advantage, so the Arabs started retreating towards Jabia, which was located between the river Yarmouk to the south, Lake Tiberias to the west, and the desert to the east. Messengers were sent to the southern group with the order to march towards Jabia. The Byzantines, who barely missed an opportunity to crush their opponents around Emesa, wow, now started he get chasing the Arabs slowly coalescing after taking the city. They retook Damascus and continued he south. He this would be a huge battle, huge bro. Man. Holy <laughs> crap. And sometime in the middle of July 636, their vanguard made contact with the Caliphate's rearguard to the north of Jabia. The Arab commanders, who initially liked their position, now understood that they might be attacked from the southwest via the narrow passage between Lake Tiberias and the River Yarmouk. The Byzantine field army could have engaged them from the front, while the garrison of Caesarea might have attacked using the passage. Therefore, Abu Ubaidah left Khalid in command of the rearguard and started repositioning his troops. <laughs> uh -oh. The latter engaged the Byzantine vanguard, led by the light Christian Arab horsemen, allowing the rest of the army to move unharassed. The Muslims encamped in the eastern part of the plain of Yarmouk. Wow, look at all Some distance like to like the most he had were the lava hills stretching from Usually north like to east of Azra and the mountains of Jabal ad Druz. A few days later, probably in the last days of July, the Roman army entered the plain and built a fortified camp in its western part. Yeah, <laughs> Holy crap. With the central portion of the plain left unoccupied, the army started preparing for battle by scouting the enemy positions. The sources mention extensive negotiations which continued for weeks, but the details of the talks are convoluted. I want to know if they were trying to get them surrender or they were just trying to get, bring peace and bring neutral. I don't know. I guess they were trying to figure out what, what, what they were so trying to keep. Yeah, yeah, until the war, the war. I want to know. 
In short, they ended in failure and the battle was inevitable. According to some sources, the Caliph's reinforcements, consisting of 5,000 famous Yemeni archers and 1,000 footmen, who were mm. veterans of the earliest Muslim campaigns in Arabia, joined the army sometime during this negotiation. Or well, maybe, maybe it was by yeah, time. Maybe by the battlefield come. was enclosed on its western and southern sides by deep ravines. To the west, Wadi ur Rakad flowed into the Yarmouk River near Yekasa. This stream ran northeast to southwest for 11 miles through a deep ravine with very steep banks. The ravine was crossable at a few places, but there was only one main crossing where the village of Kafir ul Ma stands today. South of the battlefield ran the canyon of the Yarmouk River, while deserts occupied the north and east of it. The plain was mostly flat, save for a small hill called Samain. Hmm. That probably used to some other later. On the 14th of August, the Roman army moved forward and started forming up to the east and north of Alan. It is debated whether the army was commanded by the Armenian general Vahan, or each of the five corps had a separate leader. The Byzantine army positioned itself as follows. The light Ghassanid cavalry of Jabala was stretched across the plain as the vanguard, with the objective of screening the army and skirmishing with the enemy. Okay. Hanatir commanded the left flank, while Grigori was on the right flank, and two central corps were led by Derjan and Vahan. The Romans had spear and sword infantry in the first rank, archers in the second, and cavalry behind them. Okay, I see the setup. Although Abu Abaida was the overall commander appointed by the Caliph, sources claim that he allowed Khalid to be of the course, one given why the would orders. You? <laughs> like... The Muslim force matched the widths of the Roman army, but as it was smaller, its formation wasn't as deep. Yeah, Khalid moved some of his people. light cavalry to the vanguard to observe the Romans. The infantry was divided into four corps, made up of nine units each, with infantry in the front and archers behind them. There were three cavalry units behind each flank and center, while Khalid's mobile cavalry unit served as a reserve. The Arab commander's plan was to defend and tire his foe, and then counterattack when possible. Both armies had a southern flank secured by the river Yarmouk, while the northern mm, so flank they, nobody the flank desert, each other. offered a chance to outflank the enemy. Yeah, but that's all right. You got to, I don't want to know how long really that, how deep that goes and how long it would take to flank some. The Battle of Yarmouk started on August 15th, 636, with the Roman light cavalry vanguard moving behind the main army, mostly reinforcing the left flank cavalry. Mm. The Arab vanguard did the same and joined the main cavalry units. <laughs> it is unusual to see a battle fought in this His era, right. it wasn't started by a really. clash of light skirmishers but the sources didn't mention this happening, instead insisting that the champions of both sides dueled for a few hours. In any Three case, one. after the screening forces pulled back, a third of the Roman infantry advanced across the front at midday. Soon, the Roman footmen clashed with their counterparts, while the archers in the second rank skirmished, sending volleys above the heads of their infantry. The details of this first day are scarce, but it is possible that the Byzantines decided that a reconnaissance in force would provide benefits. Their attack was slow and lacked determination. Hmm. After so a few hours of fighting, they, they disengaged they fought, and returned to their initial positions. The first day of battle was over, and the sides returned to their respective camps. At night, a few Roman light cavalry units moved forward but they were caught by their Arab counterparts and forced back. <sighs> These raids were seemingly disjointed and lacked an objective, as they were not conducted by nearly enough troops to do much damage. However, they allowed the Romans to form up in the darkness without alerting the enemy. The plan was to attack the Muslims as early as possible, okay. not giving them the opportunity to get into formation. Indeed, the whole Roman army attacked before dawn, some sources claim they knew of the Muslim religious rites, that one of their prayers happened at this time, and decided to oh, use it to their advantage. Wow. Unfortunately for the attackers, the same light cavalry patrols who fought them during the night were ordered to remain in front, and as soon as the Romans came into contact with these forward units, the Arabs retreated to their main force and informed them of the impending attack. 
Just like to last battle. To the surprise of the Romans, their foes managed to prepare for the attack. However, they had their orders, and so the second day of the battle began. Wow, bro. He always, he always keep a car he always he always kept a cavalry to overlook right. at Right, like yeah. that saved him. Like last time his cavalry looked at, like when the last battle, yeah. his cavalry looked and they saw him and they re retreated and told him like, it's crazy. To tie up the Muslim army's center and pressure its wings. To that end, the attack in the middle was relatively passive. The Byzantine left attacked the Muslim right head on. The first two attempts to break through failed, but the Byzantines had a numerical advantage and used it. Fresh troops moved to the front, and the third attack pushed the Arabs back. Some of them started retreating towards their camp, and some joined the centre-right. This opened a way for a counter-attack by the Arab right-wing cavalry. Its charge wasn't strong enough to force the Romans back, but tied them up for some time, allowing mm. the infantry they to They probably retreat. did their job, though. Mm -hmm. Soon the cavalry was unable to withstand the pressure and also retreated. Later, Muslim sources mentioned that the wives of the retreating warriors shamed them into returning to the battle. We don't know if that is true, wow. but the Arab right flank reformed and started marching towards the approaching enemy. Meanwhile, the Roman right, which was probably made of the best heavy infantry in the empire, was even more successful. Some sources mentioned that it was fighting in a testudo formation, but that is probably an anachronism. In any case, the first or the second attack by this group drove the Muslim left flank back, and they hastily retreated towards the camp. Similar wow. to what happened on the other side of the battlefield, the Muslim cavalry attempted to stem the enemy advance with a counterattack, but it failed, and the horsemen too much, their bro. infantry yeah, they got too route to the camp. The sources once again claim that their wives urged them to return to the battle, and even threw stones at their husbands. As <laughs> wow. the Roman right was slower due to its heavier armor, the Arabs had more time to rearrange their line and move towards the Romans. I wanna, I'm want surprised why the Romans they An pushed attentive viewer on that might side. Ask yeah, yeah. Why the Byzantines didn't exploit these breakthroughs right. by pouring troops between the gaps in the Muslim formations, or by outflanking the enemy That's right by saying. widening the front. In truth, we don't have answers to these questions, wow. but it can be assumed that the fresh Muslim cavalry in the center and in the reserve probably discouraged the former, while yeah, the latter maybe. was dangerous due to the fact that the Arabs had already used desert terrain. But then again, you still gotta take your shot if yeah, you got a shot, bro. You, like, you gotta push that, though. Numerous times in the past to outflank the Byzantines. It was noon. And Khalid had just been watching the battle until that moment, but seeing the return of the wings spurred him into action, taking oh, nice. command of the cavalry taking in the, the command center. Of it. First, his united oh, cavalry force yeah, yeah, charged go. to the right, and moments after joining up with the right wing, attacked the enemy left. The Romans didn't expect an attack from the flank, and were forced to retreat to their original positions, losing men along the way. To the south, the left of the Caliphate's army was about to engage the Byzantine right. Initially, the Arabs were getting the worst of the fight, and were about to break and flee again. However, Khalid was on his way. He sent one unit of his cavalry to exploit the gap between the enemy right and he center right, they didn't do. and yeah. charged the rest into the he side of the Roman right. He always the gap and going around and flank his cavalry to the behind. Best Roman infantry, so they resisted longer than their counterparts, and suffered fewer casualties, but still retreated. The cavalry unit sent to attack the Roman center right surprised the latter, managing to break in and killing the commander of this group. The Romans recovered from their surprise and pushed back the attackers. However, seeing that their flanks were retreating, the center also broke off and returned to their starting positions. Wow. Both parties. The, the Romans just didn't go. They didn't take advantage, take advantage of the opportunity they had, and he did. Probably suffered similar casualties, with the majority of the Arab losses during the early retreat. The Roman right lost the most troops, and that would prove to be important during the next day, as this detachment started its advance alongside the whole army, but stopped well short of the enemy army with archers on both sides entering a half-hearted skirmishing contest. Meanwhile, the Roman center-right engaged the Arabs. 
but this attack only served to tie up this portion of the opposing army. The main attack targeted the right and centre right of the Muslim army, and although initially the Roman onslaught was slowed, their numbers started to play a role. Okay, they the Muslims again, started to retreat, but they couldn't take them all especially back. on the right flank, where their line was pressed all the way up to the camp yet again. This allowed the Romans to increase the pressure on the rightmost units of the wow, Muslim they them back right a lot. and start turning the line. Amir's corps finally reformed and returned to the battle, but all their efforts only managed to stabilize the line. The Arab cavalry in the second line attempted to outflank the Romans, but Canatir moved his own to block off this advance. The cavalry in the second line attempted to outflank the Romans, but Canatir moved his own to block off this advance. He learned from last time. Huh? Seeing that the right. Roman right was being passive, Khalid deduced that his left was safe. He moved the reserve cavalry to the right and charged the Roman flank. The Byzantine commander attempted to move more troops from his second rank to widen his front, and it worked for some time. However, the Romans now lacked their previous depth, and with this advantage negated, they the Arabs push, in the push, other push. parts of the line started to push back. Approaching dusk, the continuation of the battle became impossible, and the attackers disengaged, retiring to their initial line. Wait, really? Nobody it moving but the, the left. the Romans were yeah. getting frustrated, as they expected their numbers to prevail at this point in the engagement. In the first three days, the Romans probably lost more troops, but they still outnumbered their foe. Wow. Meanwhile, for Khalid, the main worry was the losses among the Yemeni archers and on the right flank. The Roman plan for the next day was to attack the right half of the Caliphate's army to divide it and encircle each corps separately, and then do the same with the left half. To that end, their left attacked the Muslims, and soon the right flank of Khalid's army was shoved back yet again, again. but not as far as in previous days. Made up mostly of the Armenians, the Roman centre-left was equally successful against the Muslim centre-right. This time, the Roman troops were able to turn this he portion of the Arab wild, line, huh? which opened up space between their corps and the Christian Arab light cavalry, which was stationed in reserve behind the center, was commanded to charge into this gap. The Muslims were suffering heavy casualties, and it was becoming clear that Khalid needed to move to the area to stop the Romans from winning. Before he did that, though, he sent word to the left and center left ordering them to advance and tie up the forces in front of them. With that, the Arab commander divided his cavalry into two Circling parts. Again from the back. One of them moved to the left and same, attacked same the Armenians thing again. from the side and rear, while Khalid himself moved against the Christian Arabs. The arrival of the reinforcements invigorated the beleaguered Muslims, and they counterattacked. The fight here continued for a few hours, until eventually the Muslims started gaining the upper hand. Engaged from three sides, the more heavily armoured and disciplined Armenians suffered some casualties, but were still able to retreat in relative order. I don't know how they retreated right here. Their Christian allies the same weren't thing. as just, able to defend they themselves, and lost many hundreds before they were able to return to their initial position. Seeing that their centre had fallen back, the Roman left also disengaged. However, the left half of the Muslim army was still in Malay. Initially, the Arabs had the upper hand, as their charge surprised the Romans, but their commanders steadied the troops, and soon they were pushing back. The small number of Arab archers proved to be their undoing, as the Romans had the upper hand in skirmishes. Apparently, wow. the Arabs did so much damage to the forces of the Caliphate that later Arab sources called it the Day of Lost Eyes. Unable to withstand that was a, the force, uh, I, uh, the Arabs started that was crazy to right Shortly after, they were followed by the Romans. This attack had the Muslim forces on the back foot and in full flight, all of them except the leftmost unit of the center, which managed to crush the enemy detachment in front of it. His, and wow, at his calorie, his calorie is crazy. Crazy. Not eliminated it. Eventually, this group was overwhelmed. The Muslim withdrawal stopped around the camps but they were chased by the Romans. According to the Arab sources, the Muslim women joined their brethren in the fight against the attackers. Wow. It is impossible to confirm it, but it seems that by the end of the fourth day of the battle, 
the Romans were either pushed back or disengaged on their own. Wow. Both sides were extremely tired and yeah, battered. Tired. Some sources mention that there was an attempt to negotiate from the Romans and that the Arabs refused. But in any case, the army spent the 19th of August resting. Khalid made just one change to the formation. All of his horsemen were drawn into one large detachment behind the right-wing infantry, save for one cavalry unit which was sent north into the desert. <laughs> You've already gone probably, yeah, yeah, there you go. At the dawn of August 20th, the sixth day of the battle. Of August 20th, the sixth day of the battle. Both sides charged and engaged in a melee across the line. After the melee began, Khalid sent a portion of his cavalry forward with an order to attack the side of the Roman left, but upon their approach, Roman cavalry wheeled around their footmen and blocked their advance. He's going around that big time. That was the moment the Arab commander was waiting for, as the rest of his horsemen moved forth, attacking the Roman cavalry from the side and rear. Soon the Roman horsemen were crushed, and the Arabs attacked he, he, he the infantry. Doing this in wow. the attack from three he, he sides this in and started it's falling back to the center. The Muslim right now attacked the Roman center left from the flank and rear. Meanwhile, the commanders of the Roman army noticed that their left wing cavalry was being routed from the field by the consolidated Arab cavalry, and they attempted to counter that by bringing their mounted troops together. Unfortunately for the Romans, it was too late and before they were able to form up, Khalid smashed into them, routing them. The Roman cavalry wasn't able to resist for long, and promptly started to leave the field of battle. Back east, the Armenians were defending against attacks from two sides, and for now were able to hold off the assailants. However, after Khalid dealt with the Roman cavalry and made sure that they wouldn't return, his horsemen charged into the rear of the Armenian formation. They collapsed under the charge and started retreating to the southwest. The Arabs repositioned to attack the center right and the right of the Roman infantry, but before they did, the latter fled on their own, again to the southwest, towards the only crossing over the river, all the while the Muslim cavalry blocked off their retreat from the north and footmen from the east. The remains of the Roman army were hoping to cross Wadi of Rakad, but the 500 strong Arab mounted unit sent away into the desert had already been commanded to block off this crossing. Oh, that's wow. what he made them for! Understanding that they were in a trap, the Roman officers attempted to form up some kind of defensive line, but before they could do it, they were attacked by the cavalry Just from the north and the them. infantry from the east. It was a slaughter, and many thousands were killed in this encirclement with some units managing to cross the river by swimming. Around half of the Roman army lay dead on the plain wow. of Yamuk, wow. while the Muslims lost less than a fifth of troops. Outnumbered again at war. At this point in this story, we have to leave the Syrian front, as things have... Guys, we're gonna stop it there, but that was a crazy battle, oh, because wow. how, how each day... It, it kept going From back day and forth. two, the Romans lost their advantage because they never pushed on that flank when they pushed them back. They let them. And Khalid did what they yeah, and he did. he did what they should have did. But that's that uh part where he sent that cavalry to block their point was crazy. I never, bro, from this time and he, what he's thinking, bro, he's he was ahead of his time, yeah, man, bro. But at the same time, you as Rome, you would have known to keep watching your flanks because he yeah. didn't show you multiple yeah. times. He, he yeah, but I don't think they knew that though. Them, they didn't. But that was a crazy battle, guys. What y'all think of this, guys? Let us know in the comments. Uh, please, uh, guys, hit that subscribe button if you're new to the channel. And if you want to support us, uh, hit that like button. Also, like the video up, guys. And we'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.